day and welcome to the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. I'm Brother Alan Jackson bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing us with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed us once again yet to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And of course, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participants and participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And we'd like to continue to express our appreciation and our gratitude to the leadership and the entire congregation of the Church of Christ that meets here at 3354 San Pablo Avenue here in the city of Oakland for allowing the gospel truth to bring our production here that the community that we serve might have access to the marvelous life of Jesus. And then we invite you to come by and study with us each Sunday morning, promptly at 9.30 we begin in our, our, our Bible study, and then at 11 o'clock we move into the, work, the morning worship. And then again, at 5 p.m., we move into the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. On Wednesday, beginning at 11 o'clock, there is a Bible class, and you're cordially invited to come and study. And then again, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., there are classes for all ages. You are, of course, encouraged to come out and study with us what thus saith the Lord. And we all will definitely afford you an opportunity to raise a Bible question and then we promise to give you only a Bible answer in return. And then, of course, the Gospel Truth Worship Hour wants to let you know that we know that from time to time that individuals may come to you and they may be seeking some type of assistance. And you may not be able to assist them, but a resource that will assist them in uh, obtaining or eliminating the need that they have is 211. So if you give them the number 211, they can call that number, speak to the representative, and basically state what their particular uh, need is, and then they will be referred to the proper resource that will eliminate that need. So if it's about uh, child care or a food program or rental assistance or utility assistance or services for battered women and, and much, much more, remember 211. And then, of course, we understand that there's been a little shock in the economy and that people still are unemployed. And we know that there are some people who have gone back to work. But in view of the uh, instability thus far, we want to make you aware of the fact that the East Bay Works One Stop Career Centers are located throughout Alameda and Contra Costa counties. And if you go online to eastbayworks.org, then you'll be able to bring up the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. And then once you go out there, you'll find yourself in a world of jobs and opportunities to have a resume written or critiqued. And then you'll have access to job leads, uh, computers and fax machines and telephones and all those things that will assist you with becoming gainfully employed. So remember, that's eastbayworks.org. And that's the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. All right? And so right now, we'd like to also make you mindful of the fact that the gospel truth can also be viewed on the YouTube. So if you go to www.youtube, bring up Edicam1, and then the gospel truth. Or you can go to uh, YouTube, www.youtube, and then you bring up the gospel truth with Alan Jackson. And then you'll be able to view the various programs that are listed there. All right? So, uh, once again, this evening we are going to get into our prayer list. And we're going to uh, ask the uh, congregation, if they will, uh, 
provide us with the background singing of Sweet Hour of Prayer, and then we will begin to bring our uh, prayer list to you. So, right now, without uh, any further remarks, we move into the prayer list. So we'd like to start by calling off the name of Alberta Jean Anderson and the Jacksons, Alan IV, Titus, Brittany, and Alvante, Allison, and Tony Eastman, and uh, Andrew Eastman, Dr. Janice Marshburn, Mr. and Mrs. Luckett, Sister Jerica Hudson and family, Miss Elaine Pinnell, Sister Laurice Williams, Sister Gertrude Tolliver, and also the Stevensons, Jesse Jr., Sylvester, Dicey, Jesse Clark, Jessica, Sylvester Jr., and Anika, and Elijah Lewis, and Josiah. We're also praying this evening on behalf of Sister Mary Marshall and Sister Mildred Perkins, Brother Alan Frazier and Sister Bertha Reed. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Christine Aubrey, Sister Maria Wilson, and also Sister Ethel Jackson, Sister Nettie Hamilton, and Sister Roberta Haywood, Brother Lewis and James Williams. And we're also praying on behalf of uh, Brother Wilbur Jordan and Pastor Black, Sister Helen Yancey, Sister Esther Gabriel, and we're also praying on behalf of Mr. Herbert Lester, Mr. Eric Mitchell, Mr. John E. Carson and family, and Sister Dorothy Lofton. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Margaret Belton and Mrs. Edie Parker, the Marks family, and Sister Ida B. Rockwell, and Brother Eugene Williams, and Sister Turn Tony Germany. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Ethel Gray, and all, that's Ethel Gary, excuse me, and also Sister Trina Josie and family, Brother Ron Thrower and family. We're also praying on behalf of Keith L. Carson and family, Brother Frank Davis, Brother Robert Bryant and Mrs. Jones. We're praying also on behalf of Brianna Shannons, Al and Wendy Cummins, Norma Coker, and Dave and Sadie Abraham, Sister Mary S. Harrison, Sister Gwen Murray and the Bellamy family. Sister Dolly Andrews, Michael and Kip Andrews. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Marilyn Pauley and family. Sister Shantae Wilson and Ronald and friends and Sister Hannah Mae Parker. We're also praying on behalf of Sister uh, Anna L. Moore, Mr. Gaylord Kelly and family, Miss Crystal Yule. We're also praying on behalf of Marva Dykus, Sister Maddie Williams, Malachi Yule, Amber and Amani. Antoinette and Alex, Sister Betty Lou Wright, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Mary Jo A.H. Carson, Miss Yvonne Johnson, and Sister Patricia Benjamin, Sister Lucille Cox, Dr. Stephanie Pennell Phillips and family, uh, Miss Nicole Mosley, Sister Davina Watson, and Mary Johnson. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Thelma Harris and Trey Stewart, Brother Joe Jackson Sr. and Joe Jackson Jr. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Idell Hearns and Brother Woodrow Russell, Sister Pearl Evans. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Grace Ewell and Zimmy Champion. We're also praying on behalf of Brother Isadora Davis, Sister Teresa Bozeman, and we're praying on behalf of Sister Linda Green and family and Sister Edwina, Sister Matilda Dunn and Sister Annie Riley and family, Sister Shirley Burnell, and we're also praying on behalf of Mr. Juan Fernando and Mr. Enrique Vallejo, Sister Teresa Wanzo and Mr. Michael Jones, Sister Odea, Mr. Eddie Langford and family. We're also praying on behalf of Charles and Yolanda Stewart, Moselle Lester, Yvonne Hutchings French, and Sister Ruby Clifton, Brother Hawkins, Brother Adams, Sister Regina Gilmore, Freddie and Sister Mary, Sister Scurlock. The Flowers family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Annie B. McGowan, Cynthia Blackshire, John and Monique Deering, Damon and Darnell Timms, Ruthie and, and Ruthie. We're also praying on behalf of, uh, that was Ruthie Blackshire, uh, family and friends. We're also praying on behalf of Mr. Roy Edmondson Jr. and Mr. Roy Couch Jr. We're also praying on behalf of Nikki Sinclair. Ryan and Natasha, Roy and Carmen. We're also praying on behalf of Patricia Roach, Sister Pearl Clay, Miss Connie Devac, Miss Robin Cook, Miss Hazel Brown, and uh, Deborah Wade. And 
We're also praying on behalf of uh, Devane Stewart. We're praying on behalf of Sister Melody Parker, Sister Cynthia Baumgartner, and Mr. Morris Jackson, Sister Lucille Kasuga, and also Sister Gwen Fite. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Wanda McCree and family, Miss Nelda O'Neill, Miss Alice Richardson, Mr. Arthur Polk, Sister Trisalina Smith, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Ruby Richardson and Mr. Eddie Langford Sr., Sister Betty Hill, Mr. Carol Thornton and Deacon Sam Richardson and his wife Leslie. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Marzella Anderson. And at this time, we're also praying on behalf of the bereaved Della Gupton family. And it's our prayer that God will comfort the family during this time of their bereavement. And we would like to express our appreciation to the congregation for lifting up their voice and singing in the background for us, sweet hour of prayer. So this evening, I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, and we'll be dealing with verses 25 through 34. And this particular illustration is uh, basically written in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Tonight, we're going to look at a subject called the hymn of his God. The hymn of his God. Now, the account of Mark, the fifth chapter, uh, gives us an example of those folk who rejected Jesus and also those folk who accepted Jesus. And then we see here, just as Mark, the fifth chapter, begins, that Jesus had just quieted down a storm and he had chided his apostles for their lack of faith. In fact, there was a great storm that had uh, arose up in the sea and then uh, Jesus was asleep and his apostles, they became somewhat fearful and somebody said, wake up Jesus. And they woke Jesus up and then he got up and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And then Jesus asked the apostles, why are you so faithful, fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, we need to examine this evening how important faith is in our lives as Christians because the Hebrew writer says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that God is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So anyway, Jesus then, after rebuking the storm, they crossed over on the other side. So they came into uh, the country of the Gadarenes. And immediately there was one that met him who had his living in the tombs. And he was possessed of a devil. In fact, the Bible says there were many of them. In fact, they were called legion because there were many. Well, when he looked and saw Jesus afar off, the Bible says he ran and worshipped him. And then at the same time, he wanted Jesus to know that he didn't want him to uh, cause any problems for him. And, and we see that this man lived amongst the tombs and no man could bind him, not with chains. The Bible says because he had been often bound with fetters and chains and chains had been plucked asunder uh, by him and that fetters broken into pieces and no man could tame him. All right? And he was always day and night in the mountains and the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when Jesus, when he saw Jesus, he worshiped him. He cried with a loud voice saying, what have I to do with thee, uh, Jesus, the son of the God most high? And then he begged him, he said, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Jesus then called the unclean spirit out and had a talk with him. Jesus asked him what it was named. He said, my name is Legion because there are many of us. And then Legion asked not to be sent out of the country, 
But he asked the Lord, if he would, to send us into the swine because there were some swine feeding out by the sea. The Bible says there were about 2,000 of them. And so Jesus gave them their wish and he allowed the devils to go into the swine. And then those that were uh, feeding the swine, when they saw what was happening, then they ran back into the city to tell the people what had been done. So then the people that were in the city, they were incensed. They came out and they saw the man who had been possessed of the devil now sitting in his right mind, clothed in righteousness. But you would think that that would have been, ooh, something that they would have been amazed about. Nevertheless, they were upset because the pigs, the swine, then ran into the sea. And so they began to ask Jesus, leave us. In other words, we don't want you here, Jesus. Now, what does that let us know? That there were people who rejected Jesus when he walked on the face of the earth. We need to understand that today there are going to be folk who reject Jesus. Even in our midst, we have people who are, are Christian in name only. Jesus said, a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. So all you have to do is just look carefully and you'll see and you'll know. But anyway, the point I'm trying to get you to understand that then Jesus, he didn't argue with him. Now, I'm going to be here. No, not Jesus. That's not the way he responded. So he said, okay. Jesus got in the boat to get ready to go. The one, the dynamic man who had been healed of the devil, came and said, well, Lord, please let me go with you. And Jesus said, no, you go home. And you tell your folk just how good God has been to you and what kind of mercy he has had on you. And you know what he did just that? The Bible says he then returned and began to publish in Decapolis all the things that Jesus had done for him. And so now Jesus and his apostles, they're in the ship again and they cross over on the other side. Now Mark, Matthew tells us that there were those who were out there waiting gladly to receive him. And then in Mark we find that uh, as Jesus crossed on the other side that there was a man, his name was Jairus. And Jairus, he was waiting to see Jesus and he begged Jesus. He said, if you will, he said, sir, he said, look, the Bible says he got down on his face and he said, I have one daughter, only one daughter. She's 12 years old, and, 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 and she's lying near death. And uh, if you would come with me, Lord, and touch her, I know that she will be healed, and she will live. And so that now brings us up to our lesson tonight, because uh, Jesus was going to go to Jairus' house that he might be able to uh, comfort the daughter of Jairus. And then we find that uh, um, there was a woman, and the lesson tonight is called the hymn of his garment. And you see, this particular line has had the attention of the entire world. Songs and poems have been written about the hymn of his garment. I know as I look out and see some of you, I know you're old enough to remember Sam Cooke. Well, he was a rhythm and blues artist, but before he became a rhythm and blues artist, he was a gospel singer, him and the soul stirs. And one of the songs that they recorded was the hymn of his garment. And then there are poems that are written. And if you like, you can go on the internet and pull up the hymn of his garment. You can listen to the song or you can read the poem. Now, don't do it now. You do that when you get home, okay? All right. But anyway, the point is I'm just giving you reference so you can refer to the hymn of his garment. And so that line, the hymn of his garment, on that day when all the things that were done and said, this line has lit, lasted over the years to touch the hymn of his garment, all right? And so this is the story behind that statement. The story of a woman in trouble. Her desperation, her determination, and her deliverance. And her experience, how it relates to us today. Now we find a woman in desperation. Verse number 43, Luke, uh, it talks about the woman she had an issue of blood. And in this one verse, we see what her problem was. She had had this problem for 12 years. 
And she had suffered many things of many physicians. And she didn't get better. Instead, the Bible says she grew worse. All right? And, and the point is she had an incurable sickness. All right? And nothing the soothsayers or the doctors at that time could do anything for her. And so ceremonially, she was unclean. And if you go to the book of Levit Leviticus, the 15th chapter, uh, verses 19 through 33, you can see the uncleanness that she possessed as a result of her uh, illness. So we find a woman who was physically desperate. She was desperate because her health was gone. Financially, she was desperate because all of her money was gone and spiritually desperate because she couldn't even go into the temple to pray and ask God for help. She had the opportunity, though, one day to be talking with some of her friends, and they were talking about Jesus, all right? So you see, we need to understand that uh, when we are around the, a water cooler, uh -huh, and you know, sometimes we want to talk about uh, Carrie Washington and the scandal. Well, you know, or, or, or maybe you might be concerned with uh, uh, Margulies and the good wife. Uh, you know, whatever. Or you might be talking about that quarterback for the Raiders that ran that 93 yards, made a world record. Or you might be talking about Kaepernick and how he's doing his thing. But anyway, the point I'm trying to get you to understand here is that when you're having these conversations, you need to put Jesus in there so people can hear about Jesus. Because we find is that this woman heard about Jesus. And as a result of her hearing about Jesus, she said in her mind that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I would be healed. So the point is, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So she heard about Jesus, and instantly she developed some faith, all right? And so we find that when she heard about Jesus, she reasoned in her mind, and she said, if I could just touch his clothing, I will be whole. And so her determination in Luke 44, she came from behind him and touched the border of his garment. And uh, we find that the conditions that were there to discourage her to come to Jesus was the fact that there was a big crowd. And you know, sometimes we develop a phobia when there are a whole lot of folk around us and something that we want to do, we, for whatever reason, decide, no, no, I don't, I don't think I'm, this time is not right. Well, that great crowd surrounded him, and then we find that there was an attitude of his disciples that he was keep, they were keeping people away from Jesus, but the because of the importance of his mission. And then this woman, her own appearance, she probably felt self-conscious because she was poor and broke now. The money was gone. So she was pale and pitiful, and uh, no doubt she was torn and tattered in terms of her clothing, uh, Mark 5 and, and, and 28. And so her deliverance came when she came and touched the, the hem of the garment of Jesus. This was a touch of faith, and she experienced a greater faith and than her, uh, those that were healthy already had. Those that were around her, they didn't have the same faith that she did. And then after this touch of faith, Jesus had a response. He said, who touched me? All right? And so what happened to the apostles? They said, oh, Lord, wait a minute. You see all these folk around you? Anybody could have touched you. In other words, out of everybody here, anybody could have touched you. Jesus said, somebody touched me. Now, that ought to let you know that there's ch children of God that before him, you are somebody. Not just anybody, but somebody. And so this woman, when she realized that she, she couldn't hold her peace, she came trembling and gave her testimony to Jesus. And she told him, all that she had done. And then this time now she's happy because when she touched him immediately, she was made whole. And no doubt she told the folk, I'm glad about it. You don't know what Jesus has done for me. And she went on to let people know that I'm a witness to let you know how good God is. So we need to understand tonight that if you trust him, if you have the touch of faith, you can reach him and you can achieve the things that you are looking for. And I remember she told him what she had done. She declared to the crowd what had happened. 
and how today her words endure. Everybody else, nobody else, you can hear them talk today about the hymn of his garment. And in touching him, she was able to touch others. Now, as I bring this lesson to a close, she had to press to Jesus. We all need to press to Jesus. You need to come as you are with whatever your needs are, and he'll bless you. Pay no heed to the doubters and the critics in the crowd. You need to come because you need Jesus. The woman received more than she anticipated. She was healed of her infirmity. And then immediately Jesus called her daughter. He made her a child of God, put her in the family. So you see, when you ask the Lord for something, he's going to give you more than you're looking for. All you have to do is have the faith. She was healed of her illness, and she became a child of God. Verse 48. And then we need to recognize in closing, the book is uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, uh, the third chapter, rather, and the verse is number 20. Listen to what Paul says. He says, now unto him that is able to do it.